Hello. Uh, good day, everyone. Uh, we are going to talk about another summation series today, which is similar to what we have done so far, but it is important in its own way. And that is the sum of the first n terms of an arithmetic progression. Now, an arithmetic progression, in this we have a sequence. First term plus second term, uh, when we add, of course, one first plus second plus third plus fourth. But the terms are formed in a special way. The first could be any number. But the second, you add something to the first. For the next one, you add the same something. For example, if you have taken three, seven, then you have added four. So to get the next term, you have to add four. Add four for the next one and so on. In other words, the difference between two of them will be always the same. And that is why, while denoting this uh, arithmetic progression, we the, it's a usual practice to denote the first term by A. You can start anywhere. The first term is denoted by A. Then the second term, you add something, but you know that it is the difference between every two consecutive ones. And therefore, we call it B for difference. The next one is A plus B. Then add B again. You have A plus B and you are adding one more B. And so on. This is how you get the various terms here. And then of course we want the sum up to n terms. So we are going to add that. First term plus second term plus third term. And I want to write the nth term now. First term, first is going to be A, I know, A, 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 everywhere. Then, then there are some Ds, but how many? No Ds here, zero, one here, two here. In the third term, you have one less. The next will be three D in the fourth term. In the nth term, it will be one less. One less is N minus one D. This is our nth term. And... What we are trying to do is now to find out the sum of these n terms. Of course, by means of a model. And here is the model. And you will immediately find that it is similar to something that we have done. And we will look at that similarity later on. This is A. You can see all of them have A. That's the same. So this is the A in the first term. Then a in the second term, A in the third term, everywhere this is A, this is A, this is A, and in the last term, this is A. And so, this is only A. Nothing else. Then there is one D. This distance length we shall call D. We have A plus one D. Then you have A over here. A plus one and two D. Then you have A 1, 2, 3D, and so on. A plus 4D, A plus 5D. And the last will be A plus, no D here in the first one, 1D in the second one, in the nth one, it will be 1 less, it will be A plus N minus 1D, and that will be precisely A plus N minus 1D. Or in other words, this is A, A plus D, A plus 2D, A plus N minus D, so the sum that we are looking for is nothing else but exactly the sum here. So let us see what the sum here is. And now we know what to do. We have prepared a copy for of it. And we shall turn it upside down. And place it. So now, we have turned it upside down and we have got a rectangle. Now that's nice, we can find the area because we know that one part is precisely this. So to find out this, we have to find out the sum here. That means we have to find out the area here. Now, this is first, second, third, fourth, nth. That means this is n. Now this is a, this is a. So that is 2a. 
and the middle you have precisely this part and that we knew was n minus 1 a plus n minus 1 times b so the, this is 2a plus n minus 1 a, a plus n minus 1 times d or in other words I am writing out down the area of the total rectangle it is n This is A. This is 2A. This and this. That is the other side. So it has to be multiplied. Plus the middle portion. And the middle portion is precisely this. Uh, this is 1D, 2D, 3D. This is N minus 1D. Now this area is total area. What we are looking for is the sum. And the sum is half of this because we have taken a copy. So the sum will be half of this area. And therefore it will be I write here sum of the n terms n padno sarvaro, I mean, some of the n terms, right, is n into 2a plus n minus 1 times b upon 2. And you can check this now. We were talking about 3, 7, added 4, 11. Our number of terms is 3. a is 3 into 2. 6 plus n minus 1, 3 times so 2, common difference is 4, so 8, and the whole upon 2, 14, um, yes, 14 upon 2 is 7 into 3 is 21, and you can see that this is sum is 21. Well, okay, uh, no magic about it. Uh, so that is the, now you must have noted, that the model is very similar to some model which we have already taken and that was of sigma n. And no wonder it is the same because uh, they have used it in the, made it in the same way, used it in the same way and what we are saying now is that it's no wonder because what was it? It was 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to n. So what was our A? 1. What was our D? We kept adding 1. So A equal to 1, D equal to 1. You put in your formula and you will get the required result. So this is nothing else but an AP. Similarly, we have taken another summation and that was for 1 plus 3 plus 5 up to 2n minus 1. And that was n square. Now as you can see, if we write it down, you will see that 1 plus 3 plus 5, the last term being 2n minus 1, the sum was n square. And you can see that this is a is equal to 1, the common difference is 2, and you can use this formula again. So this is also an AP. So sigma n is an AP, the sum of the or the integers is an AP, even numbers is an AP, but they are all very similar, but they are all significant in their own ways. Okay, thank you.